Hey folks, another day, another Bidfoot movie review. This is a great winner called Bidfoot from 1970. I don't know if this is the first Bidfoot film or what the first Bidfoot film was. Again, I know the craze really helped because of the Patterson footage from the, I think, late 60s or something like that. I'm not sure exactly when it was done. But... I think this is definitely the earliest Bigfoot film I've reviewed, at least as I know of. And this film is really, really shitty. Once again, not that many good Bigfoot movies. This is directed by a guy named Robert F. Slatzer, Slatzer, which unfortunately is no longer with us. He He's actually an author. He wrote a book, The Life and Curious Death of Marilyn Monroe and The Marilyn Files. Because he had a Marilyn Monroe thing. This is the last film he directed. He also did a film called The Hellcats in 1968, which I think Miss Science Theater 3000 did it on. And this film is just boring as hell, man. That's really the end of the day. I know I say that a lot for these Bigfoot movies, but this one stars an actor named John Carradine. Now, I don't know how many people out there will know who the hell John Carradine is. But John Carradine did a lot of movies, a lot of films, a lot of horror films. And a lot of times when he did horror films, they were very small roles, very small bit roles. But here he's actually a star in the film. And John Carradine, I mean, his biography is really long. I mean, he was in Evil Spawn in 1987, Buried Alive in 1990. I think that was the last film he did. Monster in the Closet, Prison Ship. He was in the Ice Pirates as the Supreme Commander. He was the voice of the Great Owl in The Secret of Nim. He was in The Nesting, a film called The Monster Club. He was in The Howling, The Boogeyman, in 1980. He was in Nocturna as Count Dracula. The Bees. Oh, God, that shitty movie, The Bees. It was a really shitty film. I think that's the one where the bees turn... They make the bees gay to help stop it. Yeah, that is true. I think I reviewed that. I don't know if it's still up. I know I reviewed it at one point. He was in Shockwaves. He was in The Sentinel in 1977. He's just been a lot of films. A lot, a lot of movies. He was in The Shootist. Just tons more. <clears throat> but he's actually pretty much a star in this one. And pretty much he's a... He's traveling with this guy. He's a tra traveling salesman. At the same time, you have this woman who's flying this plane. Her plane gets fucked up. She parachutes. And immediately when she lands, a Bigfoot or whatever the hell takes her. And then also at the same time, you have these college students... Who are driving these Yamaha motorcycles. I think they're Yamaha. I could be wrong. And when I first heard about this film. And I saw the poster. I, the poster is a Bigfoot smashing motorcycles. And it says Bigfoot kidnapped some women. And some bikers decided to go on a rescue mission. I thought wow bikers. Because I thought it was like Hell's Angels and Harleys. And okay Hell's Angels versus Bigfoot. Okay. No, that's not the case. These are the opposite of Hell's Angels. These are just college students. One guy, one of the, the lead guy of the college students, very horrible, terrible actor, fucking as wooden as the goddamn table this computer's on, has this shitty yellow jacket. I don't know why the hell he has that yellow jacket. I guess so you can see him at night. But... When I saw it was Tower students and Yamaha motorcycles, I went, oh, because if you don't have as crazy plot as that, it should be Hell's Angels. I think that'd be funny. But one thing leads to another. John Carey and his buddy are at this general start store trying to sell some stuff to this guy. And the guy with his fucking yellow jacket, I'll just call him Yellow Jacket, and his girl will go off. They find these graves and they dig it up. And it's actually one of the, if you want to call one of the Bigfoot people, or you know, there's a line that says missing links or hybrids or whatever you want to call it. 
They find a grave, a really shitty looking effect of the phase, and some Harry motherfucker comes out, beat, punches the shit, knocks the fuck out of the guy in the yellow jacket, steals his woman. He wakes up, gets to the general store, calls the sheriff, of course they don't believe him. Carity and the other guy start to believe him. Says, oh, we'll go with you because they want to capture it. They want to make some money. And then they slowly walk through the woods. They slowly walk through the woods. And at times it's like, you have to show them going all the way up and all the way fucking down. <laughs> oh yeah, at that time the guy with the yellow jacket also called for his friends who are on motorcycles. Uh, the three fuck up, they get attacked, and then abruptly cuts to the general store. Like, they're coming, they're ready to attack them, and then boom, cuts to the general store. And I'm like, did they knock them out? Did they even put up a fight? What the hell? Just to the officer trying to sweet talk this lady, I think it's the sheriff trying to sweet talk this lady who's at the store. Then you have close up of. The Yellow Jackets motorcycle student gang and Yamahas going up and down. Just so cool, man. As if it was the 50s or something. And this was 1970 when this was released, at least. <laughs> and then, before that, you saw the, the two girls, the girl that you saw at the beginning, and the Yellow Jackets girlfriend tied up. And she's talking about, oh yeah, these are the missing... All I can guess is they're missing links or they're hybrids, like... You know, they had, uh, maybe human was the mother, the father, and the other was a creature. But there's something of there that they're steered of, and that's the, I guess I call the actual Bigfoot. These, I don't know if they're, they're also just hybrids of Bigfoot, or what the fuck? But whatever. But yeah, you find out that those three are tied up as well, and just basically just carroting going on and on about, yeah, we're going to get rich, we're going to catch these guys, we're going to get a million dollars. They take the girl up from the beginning. They tie her up and and like shit. The it's like, are you trying to do team calling? You get the girl, a blonde girl. You tie her up and your big motherfucker comes out and she screams and faints and tries to tear her off. It's like I think that's what they were trying to go for. I swear. And then also, you know how Team Con fought something? No, this Bigfoot has, fights a fucking bear and kills it while she escapes. Um, and then. <laughs> This is hilarious. Uh, well, not yet. The motorcycle game with the Yamahas, they get some help from this guy who has one arm, and they go up the mountain. And really, all it is is they arrive, they cut the guys loose, and then all these other hairy motherfuckers, they just run. <laughs> it's not even a fight, not even a battle. You see one little shot of the guy with one arm shooting at it, doesn't even hit it, shooting at it. That's it. And they go, oh, they're on the run. And I'm like, they, they just, you guys just arrived. You didn't even do anything. <clears throat> they just arrived and it's like, okay, they're done. I'm like, what? Wow. Nothing to it. Wow, that was fucking easy. Peasy. Way too fucking easy. But then John Carradine still wants to catch one alive, so he gets a few to go with him to make some money. And there's the woman, so they try to help the woman. Uh, the guy with the one arm shoots it, shoots it, and his buddy shoots it. One of the motorcycles he has dynamite throws into a cave, blows up the cave. Uh, again, they're trying to do King Kong because he says something like, no, that didn't kill him. It was Beauty that did him in. I'm like, fuck you. You're nothing like King Kong shit. King Kong ain't got nothing on you. More like the other way around. King Kong got everything on you. Fuck me. The 70s King Kong. Even the Peter Jackson King Kong, which I'm not a fan of, has more on you than this. A lot of movies have more on you. The Creature from Black Lake has more on you than this fucking movie. And they're like, yeah, I guess it's all over. I mean, what about all those missing links, hybrids, whatever hairy motherfuckers who ran for it? Aren't they still out there? They weren't killed. They weren't captured. They're still out there. So what do you mean it's all fucking over? <laughs> Aren't those guys going to be out there? Like, they just disappear. Well, they didn't disappear. They're, they're out there still, and they don't give a fuck. 
And then Carradine tells this girl, oh, we're going to make some money. Just want to tell your story. And then the movie ends. And I went, this is a nothing movie. This is hard to review because what's there to review? Shitty actor with a little mustache and beard and a crappy ass yellow jacket. His woman gets stolen. Oh yeah, woman at the beginning gets stolen. Carradine and his buddy want to make some money. They walk slowly through the fucking woods. You see some shots of the college students, the cool students on fucking Yamaha. Going through the woods. They arrive. The missing links just fucking... They just run away. <laughs> they go off a little bit. Big, Bigfoot. I didn't say this because a uh, shitty looking Bigfoot. Rass Rassles a bear. And then they chase after some more, shoot it, throw Diamond in a cave, I guess it's dead. Carradine walks out, John Carradine walks out with his girl, and the movie. That's really the movie. Nothing more to it than that. I just gave away the movie? Yeah, this film has a 1.8 on IMDb, and it deserves it. There's nothing to this film. Nothing happens in this flick. And, you know, this, I guess, was in the drive-ins, but it doesn't have any drive-in thing. It doesn't have tits. It doesn't have gore. It doesn't have, okay, bikers going after a Bigfoot because you stole our women. You can have some exploitation or Sasquatch exploitation with it, and nothing is done. This really seems like a film that was made in the 50s. Oh, the kids are cool because they're driving Yamahas and they're cool college students. And just this one guy wearing this fucking yellow. I remember the first time I saw. Yeah, I didn't. Even, I was. Not even watched the movie. I just saw like a little bit of it. I went, why the fuck is that guy in a radiation suit? Because that's what the yellow jacket like looked at from far as like is a radiation suit. Of course, then I looked at it a little bit more. Oh, okay, you know he's got regular pants on and whatever. And he's got a fucking beard and. But it's just this was a hard. I didn't want to, I don't, I don't know what else to say. This movie is just, it's a nothing movie. Nothing to it. I just, if you're a hardcore fan of John Carradine, you can watch it. If you want to watch a boring, bland biker guy who can't act his way out of a fucking bottle with John Carradine and his, this other guy, If you want to watch what I just said, be my guest. Not for me. I'm surprised. Mr. Science Series 3000 probably didn't. Maybe they did this, and I don't know about it. If they didn't, they should have. Maybe they'd be too damn bored with it. But yeah, this, I would say, is the most boring of the group I've seen. Assault of the Sasquatch was shitty. Okay. Before County and I saw the Sasquatch just pissed me off. This one just bored me to tears. And he, I just say even Sasquatch, the Legend of Bigfoot, and then that Legend of Bigfoot, the one with the funny dramatic narrator, those were boring and shitty. But I probably watched those over this because at least the Legend of Bigfoot, I can laugh at the narration guy being so dramatic. At least the Sasquatch, the Legend of Bigfoot, at least I can look at the pretty scenery. At least I can do that. But this, man, is just a pile of nothing. It's like, you can't see me. I'm like, you're right. Just like this movie. It's fucking crystal clear. It's invisible. There's nothing fucking there. But anyway, I'll just end it here because I, I got nothing else to say about this movie. Bigfoot from 1970. Was not a fan. That's just my cup of tea. Or my my point of view so either way i don't know what else to say but thanks for watching take care and we'll see you next time